forward head posture. So if you're someone who tends to hold quite a bit of tension in your shoulders or stiffness in your neck, this forward head carriage can often be a contributing factor. So today we're gonna to look at freeing up some of that stiffness and tension and restoring a bit more of a neutral position as we move forwards. Let's take a look. forward head posture. Welcome to Hero Movement. I'm Luke Jones, online content creator and movement-y person. So this is something we see quite often in our modern world. You get that head coming forward, the neck sort of straining out. When we have our phones out there on the bus or wherever you like to sit. You'll see it around you all the time and you probably slip into that habit as well yourself from time to time. Completely natural. There's never necessarily a, a an evil position to be in. Like our body is able to get there and it's going to duck under a doorway or whatever. That forward movement is not necessarily a bad thing. But when that forward head posture becomes our default, that's when we can start to run into a few issues. Instead of that nice sort of natural curve throughout the neck, we start to get a bit of a hinge situation going on. So we have extension at the bottom of the neck, and then to compensate that, to keep our eyes level, we get flexion at the, at the sort of the top of the neck. So we're hinging at those two points, which puts quite a lot of pressure on those two points and then can lead to a lot of stiffness and, and sort of downstream issues. So I forget the numbers, but for every sort of centimeter that your head travels forward is a, like a massive increase in the amount of pressure it puts on your neck and on your spine which can have a lot of nasty knock-on effects. The tension headaches are quite common, some shoulder issues can, can kind of flare up and then from an athletic standpoint when you're kind of straining forward like that it's a much less stable position. It's hard to generate as much force as if you were able to sort of be a little bit more upright and neutral. So in today's video we're gonna go through a very short self-care mobilization routine that you can perform at home, you can follow along with, and it's gonna help free up the tissues that are sort of holding us in this, this forward position. We'll also look at a strengthener then that's gonna help reinforce a bit more of a neutral position, and we'll have a play around with some habits you can take away to make this more of a long-lasting thing, so we can have change in between sessions and not just go back to our everyday habits. So, all you need for this video is a ball of some sort. Uh, I've got like a mobility ball here, but a tennis ball will do, um, a lacrosse ball, anything, just sort of like a semi-firm, hardish ball will work really well. It doesn't have to be expensive. If you wanna pause the video and go and grab a ball, and then we can get started. So if you wanna get into a seated or kneeling or standing posture, whatever's comfortable for you, we're gonna start by releasing some of these tissues at the front of the body that tend to get quite tense and, and, and kind of jammed up uh, when we have this, this sort of forward head carriage. So we're gonna take the ball and we're gonna start in sort of that shoulder crease here. We're gonna put a bit of pressure on, we're gonna twist, and then we're gonna look with our head or our neck to the opposite opposite side. So we're keeping that shoulder relaxed. And we're pressing, twisting, and then just sort of playing with a few different neck positions. So we're opening, we're starting to open up. I'm gonna move up through into the neck in the moment, but we're gonna start just by tracing underneath that, that collarbone. So we're pressing in and then twisting. So you might find that there's certain points that are a little bit tighter. So if you find a really, really nasty bit, then you can just kind of hang out there for a little minute and then come back. Nothing too complex, we're just pressing in. You can use the other hand as well if you need to, to get a little bit more pressure. So we're pressing, twisting the skin, so it's grabbing hold of the skin and all that fascia, pinning it down, and then we're using that sort of motion of the neck to start opening things up. So this is one 
stumbled upon in the uh, Mobility Wad toolkit. I know Jill Miller from from Yoga Tune Up is a big fan of this this sort of thing as well. Tacking down the tissue and then using that motion to, to free it up. So this is a really easy one you could do whilst you're sat watching the TV or when you're commuting, if you want to look like a weirdo. Just small motions of the neck. You just take it as far as, as you want. So trace back to that, that corner again now. And you just find the spots that are tender for you. you trace the collarbone on this side, now gonna whoop, drop the ball, now gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're pressing in, I need to use both hands on this side. Pressing in, getting a little bit of a twist. Just playing with a few different motions at the neck. So there's not really a necessarily a right or wrong way to do this one, moving the neck. You're just finding those angles that that work best for you and, and give you the most relief. You might notice that one side is a little bit stiffer than the other. I think my right here is a little bit a little bit more stiff. So again, just tracing that pack underneath underneath the collarbone. Digging, twisting. You might find that lifting your head up as well gives you like a slightly different pull. Okay, so we've released the the packs underneath the collarbone. We're gonna go above the collarbone now and, and into so the neck here into that sternocleidomastoid. It's sort of like bands that run down the front of the neck and they get very tight and sort of contribute towards that, that positioning. So we're gonna be careful around here because there's a lot, of, a lot of sensitive things in your neck. So we're gonna place the ball sort of into the neck here, just above the collarbone and sort of into this. If you turn your head to the side, you might be able to feel for that, that band of tissue. So that's what we're sort of working working on. So we're gonna press in lightly and twist. This might feel a little bit more intense than in the in the pack. And then again start to play with our head position. Don't forget to to breathe. Nice slow deep breaths. We're letting our nervous system know that we're okay, even if this feels nasty, that we're not under a massive threat. We can kind of relax into these new, new positions. Not nice. Not nice. So we can also hit onto that that trap here, the big upper trap that pulls the shoulder up, and that can that can sort of it all ties into this whole system. So we can start to start to dig into there again. That motion to the side is going to help release that. So we're pinning it down and then restoring that. That slide in motion. Ooh, that is that is messy. Oh, okay, that side is feeling disgusting. You can see on my shoulders a little bit that this one is now dropped slightly. So we've got a little bit more, we've released some of that tension around here and now I'm looking all lopsided. You might notice the same, you might not notice that. But um, yeah, it just shows that this stuff is, it is causing a change and we can, we can sort of see that. So let's go other side, get very red in that neck. So pressing gently at first, twisting, and then over to the side. Again, nice big deep breaths, nice and chilled. Get that other hand in there if you need. 
get that shear in motion and this side is tight. So when we clear up clear up this this messiness as well as improving that that forward head position you can have a lot of potential knock-on effects like beneficial effects so our overhead position can improve we get jaw issues like tmg that's often linked to that forward head that's something that i i tend towards that clicky clicky jaw and when i do this sort of stuff oh tend to um tends to get a little bit better. Okay, so we go up onto that trap now as well. This is where it gets ugly. Pressing, twisting. We can also do this, we can do a lot of these mobilizations like, like on the floor or against the wall or a door frame. If you want to get more pressure, get a little bit deeper. Um, the ball, this, this is a really simple one that you can do. It's, it's really accessible. As I said, you can do it when you're traveling, you can do it. When you just sat at home, we could start to we could go all the way out and then start working on the lats as well. But we'll we'll leave them for now. So you should do one more release, and that's around the back of the head. So for this one, we're gonna go lying on the floor on your back. Alright, so we're down on the floor. You can take that ball and we're gonna just slide it and be working just along here. So if you trace, I'm going to trace like the base of your skull. Again, just be careful in this area. You don't have to apply a whole load of pressure. Um, but we're just going to just going to rest our head, start at the centre, and we'll just slowly ease our way across to the side, taking deep breaths and trying to just let your the weight of your head take you down, just sinking that weight into the ball, melting around, around the ball. So we're working towards the side and we can actually get on to where that sternocleidomastoid actually attaches. We could start working down onto the side, but we'll just stop when we sort of get to just touching the ear find a tight bit again you can just hang out there for a, a few seconds and you can breathe into that okay we can start working our way back to the center and then roll into the other side just a nice, nice deep deep breathing and then when you reach that kind of end range bit near the ear, we're going to start working our way back to the middle. Let's slowly get up. And now we're just going to do one strengthener isometric to kind of solidify that position. So this final little strengthener um, I'm going to use a band for this. If you've got a band or a belt, then that can come in handy. You can do it without, um, but it can be quite useful as a feedback mechanism. So you're going to take that and place it behind your head if you have one. I'll roll that up a little bit. Shoulders are back and down, and then we're looking at tucking the chin in. Basically, think about reversing that forward head. So the forward head's here. We're looking at can we almost squeeze our squeeze our chin in and try and give ourselves a double chin? It's not the most flattering exercise, but it's a really effective one. So we can do it, kind of wrapping it out a little bit. If we didn't have the band, it's just tucking it in. But we can also do then a isometric hold. So we're going to get into that fully contracted position. I'm just going to breathe here for 10 seconds. And release. What you feel is those deep, 
neck flexors, the, some of the muscles that are around, it feels like sort of behind the, your voice box, that get switched off when we're, when we're in that forward head posture. They're starting to activate, they're starting to pull everything back in. So we've got a little bit more of a neutral alignment. Let's talk about habits. So one of the big things that you can take away and that could make a big difference is think about your posture when you're using technology. So the phone is a classic example, like I mentioned earlier, oftentimes we're here. And that is, if you see that is that classic forward head um, posture. So when you're using tech, can you adjust your, your laptop screen so it's a bit more eye level? So let's pause things there and I'll show you what I mean. So instead of being sat here with a screen down lower than my eye level, so I have to crane my neck. Can I use a stand or some blocks or some pillows to get it so it's a little bit more in line? That's still not perfect, but we can stick a pillow underneath there and at least then we can have our head and our neck a little bit higher when, when we're working or doing whatever it is that we like doing. Just an idea, back to the video. Or when you're using your phone, even though it might not look that cool, can you maybe bring it up to eye level as opposed to bringing your head down to look at the phone? Sort of imagining you have that little bit of string pulling yourself up so you have a little bit more space around here as opposed to being all scrunched up like that, which is, it's just not a nice position to be in. So I hope that routine and this, this video has been useful. If it was, then it would mean a lot if you could give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you've got any questions or things that you'd like me to hear. If you want more like this, don't forget to subscribe and if you can give this a share with your friends, that would be amazing too. So have a healthy heroic week and I'll catch you soon.